Well, why don't we start, um, and a few stragglers will come in, but I, I want to start with something, something completely different anyway. Uh, first, I just want to say, you know, welcome. Welcome to York. And uh, hopefully tonight we, you know, we, can, we can all learn something. What I'm going to do is, is talk about the, 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 the science in the movie, Angels and Demons, and, and then I, I really would like to open it up and have, have questions. The idea is that there's a, there was a Sony Pictures and CERN, the laboratory in Geneva, uh, got together and decided that it was in their mutual interest uh, to promote each other. And so they set up a series of lectures across North America, of which this is one. There's about 30 of them all over North America, all over the United States and Canada. And the idea is, is that since the, the fundamental idea uh, in the movie uh, has to do with a, a physics of, of antimatter, which seems fairly exotic to people, the idea was to, to use that as a, as a platform to try and describe what antimatter is. So that's what I'm going to try and do to you, for you this evening. And so what I want to do is, is show a little bit about CERN and the, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, talk about, try and describe briefly what this god particle is that they're talking about. Um, and then mostly I want to talk about antimatter, um, talking about the production of it, the holding of it, and then also I'll finish off talking about the moment of creation. Uh, so CERN is the European uh, Laboratory for Particle Physics. Uh, it's, a, it's a French acronym, Conseil uh, European pour les Recherches Nucléaires. Um, you can see it here on the right. It's, you can see the Geneva Airport. Uh, you can see Lac Le Mans, Lac Geneva, Lake Geneva up top. And of course, uh, the, the white line is the accelerator. Uh, there is no such white line. Of course, it's been put on this photo, so you can see it. Um, it was founded more than half a century ago, and more than 9,000 scientists have done research there, uh, including a lot of Canadians. So. Uh, Who's seen the movie, by the way? Oh, fair number of people, okay. Um, so this is what CERN, the control room, looks like in the movie, okay? And this is what CERN control room really looks like. Um, it's, it's fairly more modest and not quite so uh, full of glass. Um, this is uh, Ron Howard uh, directing particle physicists to, to look like particle physicists. And you notice that they're, they're in particular wearing white lab coats. So I wore one this evening for your honor. Um, but in fact, uh, these are what physicists really look like. So I'm going to take this off because they don't wear those. And uh, that's actually Ron Howard visiting uh, the site of the experiment that I work on at CERN. Uh, and that's some of my collaborators. Uh, uh, I collaborate with uh, physicists from um, Canada and the US and uh, Denmark and Brazil and the United Kingdom, et cetera. So what is the LHC? It's the Large Hadron Collider. Um, hadron is probably a word that most of you aren't familiar with, but it, it's really just another name for a, a proton. So it's a proton collider. It's the world's most powerful collider. Uh, some of you were probably following the fact that it turned on last September for about two weeks and then, it, and then it almost immediately got turned off again by an accident um, and it will start up again in August. It's 27 kilometers around, so that was that white line you could see on the, the picture of CERN. And it accelerates protons. Um, the accelerator itself, as I said, is, is underground, actually. I, when I, used, I used to work at the accelerator and uh, I had to go to work and get in an elevator and go down eight stories uh, to get to the actual experiment. And what we do is we smash protons on protons, and as everything that, that in my field that we do is it's, it's pure E equals mc squared. And I'll repeat that many times, you'll see it many times. Uh, we convert E, energy, into mass. Uh, and, and these pictures are just to show you, these are two of the experiments that are at the collider. And they're just to give you a sense of the, the size of these things. They're, they're sort of beyond imagining, actually. Uh, you can see there's a person there at the one end of the Atlas experiment. 
Um, the, the, the experiment itself is kind of the size of this building. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's truly a monstrous thing. It has a, it has a, it takes data at a rate of something like um, 11,000 Encyclopedia Britannicas per second. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's pushing the envelope in all technical ways. Um, and I'll hopefully try to explain to you why that is. Um, what's an accelerator? An accelerator is, is really just something that, that takes charged particles and accelerates them. It adds energy to them because at the end, at the end of the day, it's, it's energy that, that E is equal to mc squared. So we want as big of E we can get to get the biggest m. Okay. And what we have a tendency to do is we use electric fields to accelerate them, and then we use magnetic fields to bend them. High energy physics, which is what I do, is, is, is a global enterprise. It always has been. It's probably the most global enterprise there is. And it's being probed at accelerators around the world, um, and literally around the world, uh, including the Triumph Lab in, in Vancouver, British Columbia. And of course, many universities. What we have a tendency to do here, uh, my colleagues here, we, we, we make certain devices, and then we have to take them to these labs. And we, we actually spend lots of time at these labs, because that's, that's where the action is. OK, so before we talk about antimatter, I thought we should talk about matter, something that we all already know. Um, and just to remind everybody, uh, usually when one talks about matter, we're talking about atoms. And an atom is, 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 a, is, a, is a nucleus of protons and neutrons with electrons circling around. Okay, so this shows uh, what an atom looks like. And the sizes of these things, of course, it's called subatomic physics uh, because the sizes are, 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 are something unimaginable, really. Um, that is one ten billionth of a meter is the size of an atom. Um, the size of the nucleus is, is another 10,000 times smaller than that. And it, so it's, it's a size that you, it, it's hard to imagine. But we do know atoms reasonably well. And of course, the simplest one is the hydrogen atom, which is just a proton with an electron going around it. And I show the hydrogen atom because, of course, we will talk about hydrogen because we will talk about anti-hydrogen, which is one of the things that I do research on. And the next simplest atom is helium. And that has two electrons, it has two protons, and two neutrons. So two protons, two neutrons in the nucleus, and two electrons that are circling around. Now, that, of course, was the picture of the atom until about 1960. And now we know that that isn't correct, uh, at least that isn't complete, that the atom um, is, is much more interesting than that. In particular, the protons and neutrons are much more interesting. They are not, in fact, they're little entities all by themselves, but they are sort of mini atoms themselves. But they're mini atoms made of these things called quarks. Um, and the world is built up of quarks and electrons, basically. That's our world. And for a long time, we thought that was all there was to the world. 